God is good. God is great. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Shalom Aleichem. I bring you peace in the native Hebrew language of my Lord and Savior, Yahshua Mashiach, the one we call Jesus Christ. What a wonderful day. And as my good brother, Pastor Rose, likes to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Well, good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Jesus. I'm Vincent Rose, your host, and certainly thank God for another day that the Lord has made. I, I found myself this morning sharing in an online church service with my brother, David Beverly, and I was thinking, wow, what a great service this is. And I want to share this to the community so I can point people to Times Square Church. If any of you are like me and you find yourself without a place to call your normal church home, uh, don't ever let that stop you from taking in the word from an online source. This church in New York was founded by our good brother, the late David Wilkerson, and it still provides outstanding worship and preaching today. I'm going to share one of this morning's uh, worship songs, but please, by all means, visit the link in the description for the full service. The message today was powerful. And if you have a moment, come and visit me over on my Facebook page and you'll find a post to share your favorite worship songs. God bless you all. I just want to jump up on my feet and say God is good. I can't help it if once in a while I got to shout and just tell God he is worthy of all praise. Sometimes I just got to get up and say I can't help it. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Would you mind standing and clapping with us? Come on.
they had summoned them, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name. This is what Peter was told here. He says, don't, you can't speak in this name. But Peter and John answered and said, whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. And then Peter says this, for we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. We can't stop. One of my favorite preachers from the 1980s was a man named Dr. E.V. Hill from Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles. And from that passage, he preached the message called the can't help it condition. He said the leaders in Acts 4 pulled Peter and John aside and said to them, you can't preach anymore in that name. And he said, Peter stood up and said, we have a condition that prohibits us from obeying you. They said, well, what's your condition? He said, it's called the I can't help it condition. He said, leaders, we couldn't help it if we wanted to. We couldn't stop it in spite of your threats because we're not spectators but participators. We don't turn this religious thing on and off. It comes out 24-7. Basically, they said, you'll have to do whatever you want to do and we're going to do whatever we want to do we can't help it is all over us. He said, we were with Jesus when he turned the water to wine. We were with him when he yelled into a tomb, Lazarus, come forth. We were with him when he gave sight to the blind. So don't tell us to shut up. We got evidence on the basis that we got to keep going. And then E.V. Hill said this, the church today needs a big helping of I can't help it. The devil loves for you to be quiet with your amens. He wants a quiet church. But I'm telling you here at Times Square Church, you that are watching online, we need a big dose of I can't help it. I can't help it but tell my friends. I can't help it but say amen. I can't help it. Sometimes I just want to jump up on my feet and say God is good. I can't help it if once in a while I got to shout and just tell God he is worthy of all praise. Sometimes I just got to get up and say I can't help it. God is good. God is good. God is good. I can't help it. And folks, if you see me getting excited, I can't help it. You can do what you want to do, but I'm here to tell you, God is good. God is great. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I can't help it. Some of you are visiting going like, he's got a condition. <laughs> after, after they told that story, the room shook. A prayer meeting started and the Holy Spirit filled them all with boldness. Folks, I'm telling you, it wasn't from a command that you got to show up at a prayer meeting. It was because if God did that, then we are going to pray. We want to be filled with the. Listen, I'm not here to command you to show up tonight, but if you want to see what can happen when God shakes a room, when God fills people, what, what are you going to do? You, what are you going to watch? More NFL? Who cares? Those men didn't save you. They can't heal you. Talk, go, go find out. Go see if the Dallas Cowboys care about your marriage. The Giants don't. Oh, but Pastor Tim, it's Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills. We got to go to, we got to say, it's Josh. Let me just tell you something. God bless them all. But let me just tell you something. When I need boldness, when I need healing, when I need a touch from God, I'm telling you, get, some of you going like, I feel guilty. Good. Show up at the prayer meeting tonight. Let God inspire you to be here. I read an article not too long ago, called The Curse of the Selfie Generation. Just look, just look on a phone. I, I can't believe how many pictures people take of themselves. Seriously. It's amazing to me. I mean, it's amazing to me. Look at their phones. No, not now. Look at their phones. Seriously. 
like, what, what are you doing? And he says, whatever you think, the people who are obsessed, this is what they said, with taking selfies and posting them, they said this, the problem is not next gen and millennials. They said adults are doing the same thing. You have, you have 50 and 60 year old people taking pictures of themselves. And he goes, what's the issue? He said, it's an obsession with self. And he says, what it's also done, and this is what was interesting to me. They said, he called it the dying art of the great conversation. He says, conversations are gone because it's not just selfie pics, but it's selfie conversations. They don't know anybody else's story. They don't even take the time to go, tell me what's going on. Tell me about what God has done. Tell me your story. We, we know our story, but we never take the time. They said the selfie pics is a condition of a selfish, of a selfish generation that just doesn't, it's not interesting.